All right, we're going to be chatting about Linkin Park's new singer. Uh, here's an article by the BBC. It doesn't mean what Nick thinks it means. <laughs> yeah, US, US, U.S. rock band Linkin Park have announced a new singer, Emily Armstrong, will join them for their new album and tour. The group's former lead singer, Chester Bennington, took his own life in 2017. Armstrong will join the returning members, I'm not going to pronounce all those names, uh, for forthcoming projects. He, uh, Armstrong will share vocals and... Uh, they also have a new drummer, which I think the new drummer. And then I think I sent you a separate article where their second guitarist also is not going to be a touring guitarist, will only be a studio guitarist. And I think it brings up some interesting concepts of like, what, what is a band? Like, can a band be interplace or can you change members out whenever you want to? Mm. Um, a band like a Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. Well, that's a good analogy. That's a better analogy than not one that I don't have. So, um, no, and I think uh, we were chatting a little bit about this before, like as these musicians continue to age out, right? Like this is going to be commonplace. Right. Do you know, do you know what, just for my own edification, do you know what happened to the drummer of Lincoln Park that they had, that they replaced him? I don't think they replaced him. I think he chose to not continue to tour or not continue to be a part of the band. And he wanted to do his own projects as well. Um, let's, let's, let's look this up. I, I can understand it. I think you know, after you've been part of a, 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 a um, I'm, I can't think of the word, but anyway, you've been part of a, a, a band long enough, a successful band long enough that, uh, you might you might get sick of playing the same tunes over and over and over. You know, I could see that happening. Uh, oftentimes, rock stars in their fifties are like, I don't want to be a juke a jukebox anymore. Yeah, yeah. So exactly that. so like I, want to, I want to branch off to something new. Yeah. So it, basically, that's exactly what Rob Bordon. We'll get all these names wrong today. Wanted to put some distance between himself and the band. Now, another interesting part is like, you're in a band with somebody, and Chester Bennington obviously took his own life it might hurt to play some of those songs. It might hurt to be a part of that group anymore. Yeah. It meant yeah. something different. And, and this is where I think it's such an interesting, uh, I'm going to use the word dichotomy and I don't even know if I'm using that correctly, but like, um, if I freeze here long enough, I'll remember my point. That's what I was hoping for earlier when I couldn't think of the word that I wanted. I, oh, like, if I just sit here and, Stare blankly yeah. long enough, the word will come back. <laughs> did it? Did it work? <laughs> no, it, it, it actually Good. didn't. That's why I didn't say the word that I was hoping to use. Hopefully I stalled long enough that I remembered my point, but I didn't. Um, no, I think it goes back to my point about interchangeable members. And and uh, the good thing is, Nick, this is us learning how to do this again. <laughs> I'm noticing some roughness yeah. on the edges. I, 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 these yeah. first couple, I'm fine. I'm fine cutting up these first a little bit if we need to. So as we get into the the skew, um, established an established band. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Lincoln Park's been you're part of an established band for so long. You end up playing a lot of the same tunes over and over. And I could see just yeah, that's the, that's what I was trying to say. I could see getting sick of that and wanting to do something fresh, something new. Yeah. Um, do you think the, the need to want to continue on? So the, the three members, I mean, like Lincoln parts, like a five or six member band, if I remember correctly, probably five. Um, do you think the rest of them are doing it out of necessity out of like, I need a creative outlet out of money. Cause why wouldn't you just form a new band? That's, that's a valid question. Are they wearing um, a, they're wearing a Lincoln park skin suit. The first, the first thing that actually comes to mind for me is, uh, is Pink Floyd. You know, a band I know, not not a ton about. I mean, there's probably the average, the average person over forty or fifty knows a lot more about them than I do. But um, they they broke up. Was it the eighties? I think. The, Sounds about the 80s, right. Eighties. I think they had their big falling out. But um, Roger Waters actually was like the one who broke off from the rest, right? And even though it was he and Gilmore having the dispute and he didn't get the rights to the name Pink Floyd, right? Um, uh, it was Gilmore and the rest that got the rights to the name Pink Floyd. And so without Roger Waters, it was like the, the main, you know, creative force as far as like lyrics and, and song ideas, they kept going on as Pink Floyd for mm. a while. Yeah. 
Um, and it's like, well, is is that Pink Floyd? And then you've got Roger Waters performing The Wall. You know? Yeah. Um, is with with none of the other members. <laughs> like, is is that Pink yeah. Floyd from The Wall? I mean, no. I would I would say most definitely not. I think I think in my view of it, the only Pink Floyd is all those members together. Okay. Um, they were the ones who it was their energy, their dynamic, their ideas, their personalities that created that entire. Uh, that feel, that music, those those lyrics, you know, I mean, without Roger Waters, they didn't have the same level of lyrical work, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, for example, and without Gilmore, they wouldn't have the same, you know, musical creativity as far as the guitar goes and those soundscapes that he would create with the guitar. So uh, that's my take on that. So as far as, as Linkin Park goes, I mean, you know, Chester's voice was, was icon it was an iconic part of, of Linkin Park. Like, yeah. You know, it be, it became that. Um, Do you? But, but that's also probably why it would make more sense to go with a female, because you're going a hundred and uh, you're going you're going completely the opposite direction, right? So you're you're not having that comparison where like when Journey replaced their singer, right. they got a or even Queen when they Queen replaced their singer a couple years ago, that guy that won American Idol, um, yeah. y they went for a sound alike or really close to not a. Mm -hmm not a complete opposite and, and there's probably advantages to it too yeah you know I, I you know i can see i can see the point there uh, of not wanting not wanting to have to sound like they used to sound right yeah. it's, it's a different person who's going to have their their own characteristics and their own personality um their own voice so that would but again it's like well why wouldn't you just make a new band Right, like, uh, well, this is this is my point we, about skin suit, though, because like instead of them releasing Star Wars the way that they are right now, why not just make a new sci-fi movie? Because you're you're trying to get right. this, you're trying to use a property that already exists. Because guess what? If the three members that are left from Linkin Park, if they try to form a band tomorrow, they're not going to get the fame and popularity that that current Linkin Park has. But there would. And, and I'm not disputing that. That is true. But there would be a degree of interest. You know, people would be like, oh, there's a new project yeah. from these people from Lincoln Park. I really want to check this out. And then that's a whole new energy. They yeah, get a whole yeah, yeah. new story, you know. I dare bet, though. But they don't, they don't perform all the old tunes of yeah. Lincoln Park. Well, I bet they would, though. Fans. I bet they would. I bet they, you know... Um, John Fogarty got... He was CCR's lead singer. And when he went solo uh, via contract disputes, if I remember correctly... He got sued for sounding too much like John Fogarty. <laughs> and he's like, but this goes back to, I, I saw a comment. It might've been somebody on Twitter who said like, in my mind, the singer is the band. So this kind of goes through your Roger Waters, which sang a lot, right? Correctly? Correct? Uh, well, Gilmore was the main singer, but Roger okay. Waters sang as well. Okay. And who was the main lyricist? It was Waters? It was Waters. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I think, you know, who... <sighs> Can you can you take out the singer and the main lyricist and be the same band? And I don't know via Chester Bennington. I don't know enough about that to be like, oh, he was the main songwriter or he wrote his vocal parts. No, I think he, as far as I remember, uh, what I know is he did his vocal parts, but uh, he wasn't the the songwriter or the lyricist. Okay. I think he he collaborated on that, yeah. but the I, I know that the um, I can't think of his name now, but. Uh, the dude who, who does the rapping and plays the keys, so what's his name? Uh, I'm not going to remember it, but as far as I know, he was the main creative force behind okay. it. Yeah. Um, God, what was his name? Or what is his name? I think I have it in this article. Yeah. Uh, we have Mike Shinodoa, Brad. Mike, Mike Shinoda. Mike Shinoda. Shinoda. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, he's a cool dude. He does some good work, but I think yeah, as far as I remember, he was the main uh, creative force behind the band well, from the get go. You yeah. know, like it was his his idea. Um, my big thing is I feel like it's a, a factor of diminishing returns. If if you do if you do Lincoln Park as a new band with three of the same members, your your fan base of a hundred percent is going to go down to twenty percent. If you stay Lincoln Park as you are, your fan base can go from a hundred percent to eighty percent. Sure, and then that's maybe why they chose. Bring up that kind of that kind of ontological question of like, is it still Lincoln Park without all of the members of Lincoln Park? Yeah. You know, yeah. which which is different. You know, if you've got a you know, there's, there's plenty of of like 
big established uh, bands or singers out there where they have a backing band and like the singer oh, and yeah. the backing band is just interchangeable. Yeah. Like that's a whole different thing, you know. But when you've got the stable set of members over a long period of time from the beginning yeah. on, you know, and then and then something happens and you change that, I think you have I think you have that band has died. Like you can mm -hmm. You can keep it going. You can, you know, you can change its shape, but you're not going to have that. That's no longer really Lincoln Park. It's some kind of Lincoln Park asterisk. Yeah, yeah, some kind of version of Lincoln Park. Yeah, right. I was watching um, YouTube, and a Howard Stern video came up with Sub Sublime, and I clicked on it, not knowing much about Sublime, and going like, "Man, the singer's really young, and all the rest of the people look old." And so I had to do some research. Well, it's, it's the, the main singer of Sublime died and um, they replaced him with his son. Oh, so, wow. and, and there was talk that the Beatles were going to do that too with one of the Lennon kids before Harrison passed away. <clears throat> um, and again, it, so at least it's the same DNA, but you're like, eh. I don't know. And I, the I, same I, DNA is the same person though. No, <laughs> you know no. Well, in, in, in our fans, so fans are giving Linkin Park some shit. There's some people that are giving Linkin Park some shit via the fans. And um, should they just shut up? Should they mind their own business? Is it different than like your favorite football team trades their quarterback? And it, well, it's still, this is still the Miami Dolphins, even though they don't have, you know, I don't know any quarterbacks in the league, but. I, I hesitate to, to say that the fans should, should shut up and mind their own business. I mean, I don't think it's going to do any good to bitch about it, to complain about it. Um, and you know, they, frankly, the, the remaining members of Linkin Park are going to do as they want to do. Yeah. I, I just would say that, you know, from where I sit, I don't, I don't know quite why they're, they're, they're doing what they're doing. I don't know why yeah. they're continuing this. Like, like none of them, for example, none of them, it's, it's not like that without this, they're going to be broke. Yeah. So it's not the money, you know, um, they could be, they could have a creative outlet in any other project. Yeah. They're these well-established, well-known people at this point, like they could join any project they want. So I don't know exactly what their motivation is for continuing, mm -hmm. uh, the name, the brand Lincoln park under the circumstances that they're, you know, that, that they're currently in. Um, I wouldn't do it like, Personally, but again, I don't know what what their reasons are, yeah. and I don't think that I don't think that you can really say that you know that the fans have no say. I mean, they you know like they they don't have to shut up. They're the ones who supported this, you know, have yeah. been supporting this group, yeah. and the fans are the only reason any group is successful at all. For sure. So, um, some other notable ones that we were talking about before is the Kings of are not Kings of Leon, uh, the Killers main guitarist um, who no longer tours with them. Uh, we were talking about Larry Mullen Jr. from U2 not playing their last tour because of his hand issues. Um, I, again, I don't want to just make a parallel between all rock stars are getting old and we're not bringing in a new crop, but that's part of it as well, though. It's like as you continue to age out, you're, you're going to have to like put the people that are good together again, and you're going to have to make something work if you want to stay in the limelight or if you want to release material, if you want to have a creative outlet and whatever that, like you said, we don't know their exact reasoning. And, right. and it's easy for us on the outside to be like, well, I would never do that. Well, shit, if somebody offered you a million dollars to go back on tour, you'd be like, there, there, maybe you'll do that. <laughs> uh, my, Michael Caine from, from, I mean, Michael Caine is a great actor, but he was noted. Uh, Michael Caine. Yeah. In the 60s, he made some shit movie and he goes, well, I needed to buy a house. He, did I want to do this shit movie? No, but I, I wanted to buy a house and this was how I bought that house. So. I mean, hey, you know, at any any level of the um, uh, where, where you stand economically, any level, we're all doing things for money that we yeah. wouldn't normally do or necessarily do. You know, we wouldn't choose to do yeah. uh, voluntarily. It's not our. It's no, we're not following our hearts in every yeah. move that we yeah. make when it comes to paying the bills yeah. or buying that new thing that we want. You know, so I, I don't think we can sit here and on a high horse, you know, <laughs> some moral superiority yeah. being like judging people for saying yes to a lot more money than, yeah. for example, most people will ever see. Yeah. 
you know, to do something that maybe we're not totally okay with. It's like, well, look at your own life, you know, like you do things you're not totally okay with. All, all the time. time. Yeah, but we're not under a microscope, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My, my current fan base is never complaining about what I'm doing for money. Because <laughs> they, because one, I don't have the fan base, and I don't have the money either. Um, well, and, and I wonder too, if you're, if you're chasing a little bit of that artistic dream of like, man, when we were the band, we were great. And this was, this was when I felt the most creative and I was really in touch with everything I wanted to do. And you're chasing that dragon a little bit too. Where I will say, I think there can be a downfall. And I think this is, this is very common for people who get this established name and, you know, that kind of chasing the dragon idea is. I think it's really easy to fall into that place where you stifle yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 you're so attached to the past, to the, what has been that you, you cut yourself off from the, what could be, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think, for example, I think that's where Roger Waters landed. Just to jump back to the Pink Floyd, yeah. for example, you know, cause the rest of his life, you know, all he, all he did was the wall, the wall, the wall, the wall, the wall, you know, that was his one creative outlet. Yeah. Um, that I know of, perhaps there's something true, else, true, true, true. nothing that, you know, made waves enough for me to hear about. Um, whereas Gilmore went and he was, he's, he's been creative the entire time. He went, yeah. and he's done new music, he worked with other people, you know, he's, and he's kept, you know, there's been like a, yeah, a vibrancy to his career that hasn't been true of Waters. He's just been, you know, replaying, you know, riding the same horse all, yeah. all those yeah, years, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, which, which is, in and of uh, itself is interesting because those two obviously don't get along. Mm -mm. And, and you do wonder if there's some of that, um, again, yeah, Waters just wanting to chase what was successful for him and trying to just relive that over and over again and not being in the right mind space or have the right group to, I don't know, push himself to that next direction or whatever that is for him. I've wondered just in a kind of a more philosophical level i suppose like or maybe psychological like what you know i've thought about that a lot and, and what motivates the two because they're so they're so different yeah. you know and i've wondered my impression whether it's true or not just my impression is that david gilmore really really loves music and loves playing music and loves making music and i'm not sure the same could be said for roger waters mm -hmm. It's just not how it, it played out. I think he has a passion, or maybe he had a passion for music, yeah. and maybe the success took that away. Or maybe he never had a real strong passion for music, and it was just, you know, kind of where he found himself. But I feel like if you have a true, a true creative drive and passion for something, like you do more what Gilmore did, and you keep, you keep doing new things, you keep creating you know and, yeah. and you don't just sit on this one thing and repeat it for you know for the rest of your life um i think that i think that is an example of losing your drive and your passion for something yeah. you know and now, whether that's true or not that's just no, you know, I, well and I, th I i go with that via like even some of the facts we're like we don't know this person and we don't know all their history so here's what we do know and and i wonder how much is like oh man i read this on twitter once and then somebody repeated it to me and now i think it's fact so this is my approximation right. of who this person is and we're just same thing with lincoln park i i i could maybe name one of their songs but i i'm not a fan by any means i have no ill will towards them but i, I guess do what you want to do if you want to be Lincoln right. Park with a female, be Lincoln Park with a female. If you want to be it with, you know, a a giraffe, do it. Maybe that would actually be better. <gasps> that would make a lot of sense. Lincoln Park, zoos, parks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're Lincoln the parks. Together, <laughs> oh, I did something all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, in the at, you know in the end, it is it is their call. You know, whether whether it's creatively and um, artistically the right call. I don't know. I, yeah. I personally would in, be inclined to say no. I think I think it's a great way to stifle yourself and prevent yourself from um, from creativity. But hey, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, and then you start playing with a couple of hired guns, and all of a sudden, those hired guns, in my mind, are are probably yes men. Because guess what? If I was in that situation where Lincoln Park calls me and goes, "We want you to play drums," which would never happen, obviously, or any instrument that Lincoln Park would need, they would never come to me towards to 
Um, but, but it's interesting because it, it changes that dynamic so much where it's like, it used to be probably four or five people putting in their input. Now all of a sudden it's two people. Uh, the direction right. changes quite a bit, very quickly in my mind. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. There's not, well, and that's, that's part of what I was saying earlier is, you know, when you've got these, these established members, you know, over a long period of time, like they have a dynamic, they have. Mm -hmm. They have um, their, their personalities and their, their workflow, you know, this is all like integrated over years of working together, you know, these relationships developed and, and yeah, you, you don't, you're not going to get that same, a same creative process, not even remotely close to that yeah. same creative process. Once one or two of those members are gone, you know, you've, you've broken the machinery, you just pulled cogs out yeah. and then you know, push, push the on switch again. And yeah. it's like, well, it's, it's not going to run the same. Yeah. It's an approximation of the machine or a, um, it's a skin suit. I think that's the best way to say it. And I, but I, I also feel like after a while, bands just don't have a choice. If you want to keep on being Lincoln park, you are going to have to pull in some people. If you want, or the offspring yeah. has like, I think two members that are still the original, they've gone through like four drummers now. Are there, right. there, there's a Christian band that I used to listen to when I was a little kid, the Newsboys, have had three different main singers. Well, that, that's, right. that's huge. That's a huge change. And, you know, and they, they're all just trading from the three main Christian bands because every once in a while I see something about them. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's interesting, you know. But, uh, you know, and again, this is a question I don't know. I don't know their history very well, but, like, you know, what, was it an established set of people that, you know, worked together for yeah. a long period of time? Like, was that their story? Or, or, you know, or was it kind of common for them to swap members out? Right? Yeah, yeah. And then again, it goes back to like, like there you go. Like my, my example is uh, my favorite band, we know, Hurt. Yeah. Um, the only member who has remained is Jay Lauren. Yeah. You know, like every other member has been swapped out over the years. Uh, I think the longest standing member he had was Paul Spatola, the guitarist. Okay. You know, but he was gone in like 2012, I think. Okay. Or somewhere around, around about there. So yeah, you know, and Jay Lauren, he's the, he's the creative force behind it. He, you know, he's the founder of it. He's the songwriter. He's, he's the ideas man. And, and so that, you know, that, um, and from his, from the inception of the band, you know, he's had band members swapping out. So that hasn't been his yeah. case where it's been yeah, this yeah. one group of people through the whole time. It's been him. Yep. He is the band her, you know, with, is backing people. See, that's where I basically. think it is different and works a little bit better because it, it, it might even be fresh blood for him. You know, right. it, it, that might uh, spur creativity in and of itself because it, it is new people where it's not this, hey, I played with this guy for 20 years and I know when he lays down a baseline like this, I know where I'm going to go and I know what direction that's going to yeah. be. Yeah. I will say that, uh, not, not to hang on, on her for too long, but I, um, I had the, the, the fortune and the pleasure to see them live with the old guitarist okay. Paul, and uh, I could I could tell there was there was an energy between Jay and Paul. Yeah. You know, like they had a relationship, and they there was there was definitely something special there. Um, and they they performed well once Paul was gone. You know, they did a good job, and they came out with some cool tunes. But I saw them live live again, and I just I didn't feel that same yeah. level of connection. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a little bit, a little bit of a loss there for sure. You know, mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned. No, but I, I think via the band in the audience after a while, you guys, we all are chasing that. Hey man, this memory of what they were, I want it to remain <laughs> that. Right. And I think that's where fans get upset though. They feel there's that sense of ownership and man, yeah. this is, this is, or even like when everyone complains when an indie band gets popular, they're like, no, no, that used to be my band. I yeah, used to love yeah. this band. Now everyone loves this band. They suck. Yeah. Or and, and that, that happens. You know, it happens all the time. Like when when a band puts out a new album, even if yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Put out a new album that doesn't sound exactly like the old album, which no one wants. They don't want a repeat of the old album. They no. want a new album, but they don't want it to sound different from the old album while being different from the old. It's like this impossible demand on a yeah. band to sound exactly the same while being completely different. You know, and it's like, well, you're just in love with that old album. Yeah. Like, here's some new stuff. Find something to like about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, this is where we've we've grown to. This is where we moved to. Um, sometimes it's fair to say, you know, sometimes bands do degrade. Yeah. You know, they decline in time. They lose their their creativity, their drive, their their whatever that spark. But a lot of times they just it's a new album. Like, 
you're only complaining about it because it's a new album. That's yeah. that's not that's not helpful to anybody. No, uh, and 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 we're a world full of opinions, and I think you know. There's nothing wrong with that, too. But it goes back to we're not in their shoes. We don't know what they're thinking. We don't know why they're doing it. So, you know, do it and, and piss off the haters. Yeah. I, I, I know I personally hate to be held to, you know, if I released one album and, like, it really became big popular and it had a huge fan base, I'd hate to be held to it. I'd like, yeah. I want to, you know, every new song, I'd like to be able to have creative freedom and yeah. do what I want to do with it. No, that'd be very stifling to be like, well, no, we have to make, or even dude, I mean, bands get famous and then they do want to sound like their last album because they, that was the formula that worked. Well, that was the formula that worked at that time. That is not a copy and paste and think it's going to work again. I think many bands fall into that trap too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. There's a fine line between always innovating and and never going anywhere and i feel like you know and i don't think it's 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 different but it's not different via membership as well and and i think it's interesting i also was thinking as we were talking about this like nobody complains when a cover band a shit cover band down the street changes out their lead guitarist nobody's fucking crying about that shit um no i i think it's because we all think we have a little bit of a stake in it much like we complain about movies that are shit because we we would love that movie to be great we would love this piece right. of art that was great before to continue to be great. Yep. yep. So sometimes when you change that shit on us, we get upset. One of my, I, I don't remember word for word at all, um, but Eminem said something. I think it was actually a lyric in a song of his from a number of years ago, but um, he said, do the best thing you've ever done. And then next year, do it better yeah and then next you do it better and do that for 10 20 years where you're always doing the best thing you've ever done but you're one-upping yourself you know and that's the pressure you're under yeah <laughs> i think if you live under that standard that will drive you to greatness i i think the alternative is bands get a lot of money get famous and then downshift or like you know art comes out of a miserable existence sometimes well, all of a sudden, when you have a swimming pool out your back door, your existence isn't as miserable. I think that's the story of Twisted Sister, if I remember yeah. correctly, or the, uh, you know, the, the, well, the rest of the band was living in an apartment together still because they weren't making much money. But the singer, he had like a yeah. mansion, he had cars, he had a great woman, you know, yeah. and, and just like all of that angst. Yeah that created that sound and those songs that people related to was gone. He's like, I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And then they lost everything. They're all working minimum wage jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like even the thing he had to sell his mansion and his cars. It's like, yeah. Uh, well, it's hard to write us. lost that motivation yeah. that helped him write those tunes. Well, it's hard to write in every man song. Like we're not going to take it when you have everything. Yeah. That would, yeah. Uh, Supposed to make you happy, not that it does, but you know, it on the offset or the onset, it looks pretty happy. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure you feel like a little bit of a hypocrite after a while, too. You're like, well, how am I supposed to write an angsty song where you know, I got this really nice pool and this really nice woman, and yeah, it's like uh, Pink Floyd writing the the uh, oh, I can't remember the name of it now, is off of the Wish You Were Here album. Um, have a cigar maybe uh, just like complaining about wealth and people with money and, <laughs> you know the, the business yeah, uh, yeah. And, and like and it's like even I remember it was like I think it was an article interview with the one of the people who worked on uh, the album with him and he's sitting there and he's like there were all these rich musicians in this room bitching about money you know yeah. it's like yeah this came off a bit hypocritical. <laughs> well, that and it's hard to ask me to relate to that. Yeah. So Petty had an album too, where he got fucked on a record deal and he's, they wanted to, they wanted to charge more for an album than he wanted to charge. And there was blah, blah, blah. But he wrote, it was the last DJ. It's a good album, but like three or four songs are about the record industry. And it's like, uh, you're you, Petty. You're really good at writing songs that relate to every person. Not every person can relate with the record industry. 